Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial that I put together by uniting different pieces from other tutorials and getting them into one video so everyone can do this amazing trick in Blender for free. So here's what is going to happen. I have a 3D model of this piece. This is a the crossover from Doom. I'm I'm just making it for cosplay. And what I want is this is a low poly model. It's not really like that low poly, but it is kind of low, right? So if I 3D print this, it's going to look like this. And I want it to have detail, right? So I have here the 3D model cut with UVs. And I found this on Debian Art. Uh, shout out to the artist. I'm going to put their name here. And I'm going to uh, show you how cool this model looks. It's completely textured. It has their, its own uh, normal maps and emission and all that. And even the blade is actually, I don't know if, if I conserve it. I think I deleted it accidentally. doesn't matter. I, I need the handle for cosplay right now, right? So what I want to do is I want to transfer all this detail from this normal map into the low poly model. So it is uh, not only like normal maps, it's like a texture in the model. Because if I 3D print this, if I 3D print this, it's going to look like this. And I want... All of this, uh, all of this runes and and drawings around and this rough texture show in the model. So how I'm going to do that, right? So I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to take the low poly and I'm going to Control C, Control V to make a copy of it, right? I'm going to put it in the in the same collection and I'm going to call it high poly. High, excuse me, high poly. There you go. Right now I'm going to hide the low poly. Excuse me, there. And I'm going to do as follow the steps. So first off, modifier, I'm going to add a remesh model. Um, for remesh, the best way that I found is to set it to smooth and then go up to 10 or 11 levels, right? So O3 depth, go to 11 levels. Now I'm going to set it to 11 and, and from, e from here on, it's going to be quite slow because it's going to have to create a lot of detail. Now my computer is not uh, slow, it's quite beefy, not top of the line, but it's good enough. Uh, but yeah, this model right here must have like millions of polygons right now. Um, and then I'm going to just apply it and we will see it. So every time I click something now, it's going to take some time and I'll try to make some cuts around. So if I uh, enter in edit mode, we will see that it's very, very detailed right now, but it still has the same shape of the low poly model, right? Now, one thing that we have lost is the UV mm, cuts right here. So if I go into the low poly, we can see that we have the UV cuts from the original model, from the original artist made right here, very nicely, right? But when you remesh something, you lose those details. So now we have to send this detail uh, from the low poly into the high poly. Usually you do it backwards for uh, red topology, but this time I want to do it the other way around. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this uh, high poly model that has a lot of detail, you can see here, right? It's, it's time I click something, it's going to be slow now. So I'm going to take it, uh, I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to add a data transfer. Data transfer, I have a an image here of a setting that works for me because this has taken a lot of time to uh, experiment and see how it works better. And so I'm going to do as follows. I'm going to, to check face data. I'm going to unfold it and set it to smooth. I'm going to take face corner data, unfold it and go to nearest face interpolated as I, yeah, there you go. And then take UVs. And I'm going to take the eyedropper as a source and I'm going to select low poly. Now, once I do this, the, the whole software is going to uh, freeze because it's going to take a little bit of detail and all that. And I'm going to wait for it to work again. Okay. Now it works back again and I'm going to uh, show you something. So if I get, go into material preview, you will see that the object is green. Why is it green? Because um, that's because the UVs have been resetted. They have been sent into an infinitely small point in the UV layout. And in that point, it just happens to be green color from the sword itself. So what I'm looking for is when I transfer the data from the low poly to the high poly, it's going to look like the low poly model. It's going to look like this. Or oh, that's what I'm trying to do, right? 
So what I'm going to do now is after selecting all of this and selecting the source, go to generate data layers. Again, I'm going to wait a little bit because it's going to take quite some time. And if we are in um, material preview, we shall see the material apply into the high poly model. That's because it's taking kind of an interpolation of where each UV cut should be on each of the faces and it's sending it the detail uh, so it looks like this. Now again, this is not the low poly, this is the high poly. The UV layout has been transferred to this one. And now we have a model that has the same UV layout and the same normals and color and all that as the previous model. Now, there's a problem with this, and is that if we go to solid, it still looks like low poly. We have to transfer the data from the normal map into the mesh. How do you do that? Well, first off, I'm going to apply the data transfer. So the, um, the UV layout is set and transferred completely. And after waiting for a little bit again, I will see this, right? It's going to still look um, high poly. You can see it. It's high poly, and you can see a material view. It's going to look like the actual material, right? So what I'm going to do now is add another modifier. In this case, I'm going to add displace. Now, it's going to look very freaky when you do this. Don't worry. I'm going to set the strength to much lower, something like 0, 0, 0. 0. 0.001 or even lower, maybe like this, right? Um, wait, I'm going to set it to 0 0.0005. There you go. Something like this. And I'm going to use a texture to make the displacement of each individual faces. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to set it first to uh, direction. No, excuse me. I'm going to create a new texture, and I'm going to set the coordinates to UV. And then I'm going to click this button right here, which is going to take me to the texture uh, to the texture menu, and I'm going to add a new one. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to select a texture. Now, this model came with its own normal map and all that, and what I'm going to do is select the normal map right here. And you can see there is some detail, not much, but we can adjust this here and set it to maybe one, maybe two, maybe, excuse me, maybe uh, three, and slowly we are gaining detail. Now, this is not a normal map. This is actually displacing the mesh to take on the detail of the normal map. But there's a problem. Normal maps are usually not made for this. They're not great at this. So what I'm going to do is go to a website that I will leave link in the description and uh, the name here on the screen where you can take a normal map and transform it into a height map, which is what I want. So if I go into this uh, folder, which is where I have my, my things, you'll see that I have a height map right here that I've created. I have a few height maps that I created with that uh, software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again, again into the uh, texture. I'm going to open a new one and I go, I'm going to select the high new and open image and this way is the best way to get the the detail that you want you really really need uh, a height map because it looks more like detail for example uh these things right here right here now they look like they are pushed inwards instead of just engraved these letters will be engraved in, in inwards instead of being you know kind of rough around the edges like the normal map does. Now, the best thing about this is that you can actually uh, keep changing this value so it looks more or less rough. I think that 0.003 is fine enough. And also, you can go down here into the colors if this will be not uh, unfold. You can you can uh, expand it and change, for example, things like contrast. You can you can change the contrast to make parts darker and other parts lighter, and you can increase the detail or the depth of these engravings, things like those. I don't want it to be too exaggerated. I'm going to leave it at 1.2, and that's actually a good detail and a good sort of model. Now, one thing that you might see is that the um, polygons from the low poly model are still kind of visible. You may want to take layer of this and apply some sculpting to it, to kind of soften those hard edges. 
but this looks pretty nice for a 3D print. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this tint. And again, this is not a normal map. This is the actual mesh of the model being deformed as the normal map or as the high map that I got from that website. So yeah, it's it's uh it's pretty nice. It it's really really good, and this is very good for for any kind of rough uh, rough texture like for example this sword for stones for terrain for three D models from figurines things like those. It's awesome. Now, this method of transferring the UV layout from one model to another might be kind of finicky if you do it with very detailed models, but it should work most of the time and if not try to tinker a little bit with the settings and see if it works later so yeah this can be uh exported as an stl export as an stl right and you can just use it it's it's very fine so that's it that's a tutorial i uh, hope you liked it if you have any comments any questions any anything to say and uh, you can write in the comments and see you later